welcome back to Day in Brelandia. My name is Brianna, and in this video, me and my kids are going to be making our mini stroni soup and some dinner rolls. Um, my I forgot to mention in the previous video that on Disney days we are working on making our cookbook for our Disney cookbook that we plan on making. It may end up just being like a family cookbook. It may end up being something bigger, and that obviously is the end goal, but <laughs> you shoot for the star, or you shoot for the moon and the land among the stars <laughs> type of thing. So we'll see how it ends up going. I might end up just doing my Disney cookbook throughout a YouTube video series, maybe, I don't know. But this is gonna be one of the things that we make is our mini stroni soup. So it's like the Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse's version of minestrone soup. Um, but I also, this is also not the final recipe, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> we're still in the tweaking phases of it, but we're, this is how we kind of do our Disney cookbook, is we are tweaking recipes until we get them just how we want to get them. And then, you know, we try it out. We cook it, we try it out. If we think that it needs something else added to it, we'll try it again the next time we make it. Um, and we're just constantly tweaking our recipes until we get it just how we want it and then we'll end up writing it down and saving it for our cookbook. <laughs> but in this video, you will see that Walmart pickup, um, they forgot to put my green beans and they forgot my parsley and I said, I actually realized the green beans as I started making this and then I realized the parsley the next day when I went to go make my tacos and then I was looking for my cilantro and I was like gosh man I forgot the parsley too um and so it was it's one of those things but it's, I am in like a love-hate relationship right now with the Walmart pickup because like for instance this last pickup order that I just went through yesterday, they did not have any of my meat items. <laughs> I'm just like, how is there no meat items? Especially since I list that you can do a substitute. You know, like there, there should be a substitute for chicken breast and there should be a substitute for hot dogs because they're making chili dogs one night. So I'm just like, how is there no hot dogs? In all of Walmart, there's no hot dogs. And I, I felt like going into the store right after getting my pickup order. <laughs> But, um, we had food in our vehicle and it was a sunny day and so I didn't want to end up spoiling some of the food that I got in order to like go through the store. But I was just like, I, I doubt <laughs> that this food is missing. So we, <laughs> that's just interruption. Now let's go back to the main story here. So we are making mini strawberry soup and it's just kind of how we go about our disney days we pick a recipe that goes with kind of the vibe that we're feeling that day for that disney character and so my daughter was super excited about mini stroni soup she really wanted to show this on our video she was like can we make a cooking video with the mini stroni soup and i was like sure even though we did have a very busy morning that day and so you will see it in my kitchen. My kitchen was a mess. Normally, I would probably feel like, hey, I'm going to be making a video that's going to be shown to m lots of people. I was going to say millions. It's probably not going to get reached millions. But so it's going to be shown to other people. Of course, I want to clean my kitchen first. But we had a busy morning. And then I was just like, you know what? This is life. This is real life. And I know so many other moms are at that point where they're like, this is... I am a real life mom. I, my kitchen isn't always perfectly clean and shiny and sparkly and ta-da. <laughs> like I know I feel that whenever I'm watching some other um, YouTube moms out there when they're cooking on their channels. I'm just like that is so not real. <laughs> you know it's like how many times do they take that? How many times? Or even like the cleaning videos. Like have you ever noticed that the cleaning YouTube moms out there have perfect hair the entire time they're cleaning. I know I'll put my hair up in a nice messy bun ponytail or whatever and by the end of it it's like this. So I'm like how do they look so perfect all the way throughout their cleaning videos and how do, does their kitchen look so perfectly spotless and everything is in like these little dishes and containers all laid out and planned and perfect. <laughs> 
and like the perfect lighting and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that's not how my kitchen is ever. <laughs> I do try to keep a clean kitchen, um, but there's times where we just have a busy morning. There's going to be dishes in the sink and there's going to be junk on the counter because we come home and we throw some things on the counter. Don't worry. Every spot that I actually cooked, I wiped down and cleaned. So <laughs> don't worry about that. But like, you know, we throw things when we come in, we just throw things down and don't always put them in the right places. And so my kitchen's going to be a mess. And I just, it, it came to be like, this is a real life kitchen. This is us living our life. We would rather live our life than spend it cleaning all the time. And like life is too short <laughs> to be the type of person who cleans their cupboards and their counters every day. Life is too short to come, especially when you have dogs, to be mopping your floor every single day. And if you have dogs, it's going to be every single second. And so <laughs> it's just life is too short. Sometimes you got to learn to let the messes go and just live life and enjoy cooking, especially the kind of meal that we made, the minestrone soup with our dinner rolls and I share my dinner roll recipe in here as well although the dinner roll recipe is not going to go in my cookbook because it's not my own recipe um but you can't mess with perfection and those rolls are perfection so <laughs> there's no way I can tweak that to make it my own um but so there's the dinner roll recipe that you make it's it makes flour goes everywhere and the people who lived here before us put this weird surface on our counters that it used to be like a laminate counter but then they added a texturized thing over it which i have no clue why and it, <laughs> it drives me nuts but the flour and the dough always get stuck in those grooves and so it just it makes a mess and so what's the point of making my kitchen perfectly spotless before i go and cook something like that it's just it's not worth it. Mishka's in the back here. <laughs> I keep hearing this weird sound, but it's because she's snoring. Ooh, hey, that lighting's way better. <laughs> I was trying to find the perfect lighting earlier, but with the time of day that it is, and with my lovely yellow light, it just wasn't happening. Um, but yeah, so, and the same goes for the recipes too. Life is too short to follow a recipe to a T. You don't need to, no matter what anybody says about cooking and baking, you do not need to follow the recipe to a T. You follow it to how you feel it should be. You should put that, that's how you put that love into a recipe. Like for instance, the bread dough that I'm making, you don't necessarily follow the recipe to a T because your weather conditions are gonna be completely different from the weather conditions the day that recipe was created and the area that that recipe was created. And so you need to follow it to, like especially if you live in a high altitude, you're not gonna, you're not gonna follow it to, to I think you'll have to add like two, two, I forget what it is for high altitude. We used to live in a, in um, the San Bernardino mountains and so we actually had to work for high altitude. And I'm getting distracted because there's some deer in our yard over here. I don't know if you can see them. Let's see if I can zoom in. This is a new camera lens. Oh, they're behind the bush now. So I'm not used to zooming in with this yet. There they are. Those deer are the sweetest deer too. Oops. They actually ooh, um, let me and the kids get within like five feet maybe of them the other day. And that same day we had somebody come up to our driveway and ask if they could go hunting in our backyard. And I was like, no, my baby deers are out there. Like, you can't go and kill my deer. So, I was like, uh, no, of course you can't. But anyways, my battery is going to die. So, I really hope you enjoy this cooking video and you get to see real life. And you understand that you can cook 
food for the love of cooking and just go and throw it and be creative and make it your own um, and enjoy this and enjoy our Disney cooking day with some minestrone soup and our real life at that. <laughs> this is Disney cooking day, especially with kids cooking and just sometimes you just need to take a deep breath and then just remember that they need to learn to enjoy and love cooking as well. And so take a deep breath and just let the little things go and keep keep tracking along. So here it is, enjoy our Disney day. And also I get a little sassy in here too, so sorry about that. First you wanna cut up an onion and now I know it seems so simple and a lot of people know how to cut up an onion, but I have seen so many people on so many different YouTube channels who have no clue how to cut up an onion <laughs> and here they, I know right <laughs> and here they're sharing all these cooking recipe videos and yet they leave the skin on the onion and I'm like how do you have followers <laughs> Here's how you cut up an onion in the first things first. Do not leave the skin on the onion unless you are actually making like a broth because then that is good to put in the broth but then you strain it out and then you don't keep this around. So here's how you cut an onion. Um, and yeah, don't keep the skin on. Like I was, <laughs> I was watching this one girl make a chili. Oops, focus watching a one girl make a chili and she left the skin on and she was making it for a potluck and I was like, oh, those poor people. Those poor people eating onion skin. <laughs> All right, so you cut off that and this is how I cut it. Some people like to leave the end on so it's easier to hold. I don't, I feel like it gets all the little onion, like the little onion-y, oops, it's not focusing. Sorry about that. <laughs> Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Get those little onion hairs in there. I don't like that. So <laughs> I don't like keeping that on the cutting board. So you take it and then you peel off that first layer like that. And then you keep this part. And you take the other side and you peel off that first layer and toss it. <laughs> now you can just spice it and by the way my daughter normally on Disney days will do most of the cooking but she does not like cutting onions um, she I have contacts in so it doesn't make me tear up but she doesn't so um, her eyes do get teared up so fun fact if you have contacts your eyes won't water so you just mm. cut it up like so line it up and then just do it at the top and onions already have well, let me show you that was a bad example there. I should have been more careful with that. But so onions already have so many layers. So you don't have to worry about slicing it that way because they already are made sliced that way. <laughs> you put that off to the side and then you do the other part. And then make sure you're holding the knife like this. Don't do it like this. And so. that and it's just a nice little rough chop it doesn't have to be perfect you and your family are the only ones eating it so if it's not perfect little squares who cares you're not cooking for Gordon Ramsay <laughs> all right so now now you can hold this all right so now we're gonna put the onion I already got some olive oil cooking in my crock pot remember my crock pot is safe all right put it up on the counter please it's safe for the stove top so keep <laughs> that in mind. That that's why my crock pot's on here. If you do not have a crock pot that's safe for stove tub, do not do that part. And just use a regular pan for that. Man overboard. Me too. Me too. Mm. All right. And so mm -hmm. let's see here, and then we are gonna cook this with that olive oil until they get nice and somewhat caramelized. All right, so now we are gonna chop up some carrots. Go ahead and cut the ends off of those. Um, and she's wearing gloves that, careful, watch your fingers there, sweetie. 
Um, she does have gloves on that will help in case she does accidentally slip with the knife. Um, and it will help keep her from breaking. And I will link them down below in case you are interested in them. Even though we don't make any profit off of that. We just really like them. And so get rid of the ends and then chop it up. And you got to hold it. There you go. And then just give the carrots a rough chop as well. really push in there. All right, now that she's done cutting the un or the carrots and we did about 3 carrots. You can do more or less depending on how much you guys like carrots. Now we are going to take some tomato paste and some seasonings and we're going to add it over here to our... You alright? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to add it over here to our onions because you can see now that... Oops, it's getting fogged up. That they are a little, starting to get a little caramelized a little bit so that means they're just having loads of flavor added into them and so before we move this over to like the crock pot base. We are going to add our seasonings. Um, normally, real fresh garlic would be the best, but I'm just going to do garlic powder because I absolutely hate peeling the skin off of garlic cloves. <laughs> I've got um, a garlic press and everything like that, and I've got a grater that makes the grater fine, but the peeling of the skin, it drives me crazy. So, <laughs> I'm... I'd rather just, I'm just going to do this for today, only on like special occasions when we're like trying to make a fancier meal will I use fresh garlic just because I'm lazy and the jarred stuff is just as disgusting as the powdered stuff, so, <laughs> I mean, and it's not disgusting, it's just, go ahead, keep going, it's just, um, it's, it's very bland still, so you, even though it's fret, if fresh garlic. <laughs> Go ahead, keep going. Loads of flavor here. <laughs> Alright, so that's good. <laughs> Maybe a little too Now, <laughs> we're going to do some Italian seasoning. And with any of these measurements, you go based off of what you like and your taste and how that is. And so, I just eyeball everything. You don't have to be scared to follow a recipe perfectly. Alright, that's good. Um, maybe a little too much, but that's okay. No, it's good. Um, because remember, you also are flavoring the entire soup, not just the onions. And so I'll do the salt since you got those gloves on still. I'm not sure if we're going to need you to cut anymore or not. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt. I got... Did I get... I think I got reduced sodium. Um, you can go ahead and open that up. I'm taking these off so, okay. so I can do Well, it. you want to cook the seasonings in, like, um, the oil with the onions on the pan so you're kind of, like, waking up everything. Um, since they've been in jars for so long, it's just kind of, like, making those flavors come alive again. Same with the tomato paste. You don't want to add this to your, like if it's the broth and everything already in here, you want to add it to the onions because you want to cook it and get it, oh no, get it flowing. Alright, yeah, you can put it in now. So like I was saying, you want to add it to the onions in the, in the like this because it's going to help it distribute evenly without being clumpy. So if you add it just to the liquid, it's going to stay in clumps. And so you want to add it to this, and this is also going to kind of wake up those flavors. All right, that's good. And I'd say probably like two tea, two tablespoons of this added to this. So you're kind of zhuzhing it up a little and getting it distributed better. All right, so now that we got all of our seasonings waking up, and we got, oh, we didn't add pepper, but we'll... Do that. Get me the pepper, please. Oh, okay. Or you can do it. Do you think you can do it? Yeah. Hold on, bud. You can do it in a minute. 
I'm going to add lots of pepper. And by the way, this is a real life kitchen. We got stuff everywhere. <laughs> um, and we don't have a celebrity fancy kitchen. So um, don't feel like you need to have an absolute perfect kitchen all the time, 100% of the time. We already did the salt, bud, but you can do something else here in a minute. Actually, let's go ahead and cook those carrots on here a little bit, too, and we'll get them a little bit. No, no, we'll just do it in the crock pot. All right, hold on, bud. All right, that's good. All right, little man, you can put the carrots in. You can do more than one at a time, too. More? Yeah. Just do handfuls. Good job. You want a little bit of help? No. Okay. All right, well, he's getting those carrots in there. I'm going to set the camera down. And there's the little man. Yep. And now, while he's doing that, I'm going to get the chicken ready to be put in. This is one card No. Hezzy, I'm doing the help. So now, we are going to add two cans of the fire roasted tomatoes with garlic so we're adding more of that garlic flavor um and the re you get fire roasted fire Ow, roasted want... dude <laughs> fire roasted dude stop it fire roasted does not mean spicy fire roasted just means the tomatoes were cooked over fire <laughs> So I've seen, again, in the cooking videos that I've watched on YouTube, they're like, I don't know why it's not spicy. I got fire roasted. And I'm just like, because it was cooked over fire. Fire doesn't make things spicy. Guys. I'm going to do it. I know you are going to do some, but you got to be a good boy. Okay. This is on the one. All right. We're going to take turns. All right. So Sissy goes first. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Add one can. All right, now it's little man's turn. Yep. Okay. Make sure to give it a little bit of pat. I mean, pat it a little bit, just in case. All right, that's good. And then we are gonna be adding one can of kidney beans. Um, and I would go ahead and get the dark kidney beans. I think they look prettier in this, although it's it's a kidney bean. So these are just the kind of kidney beans that you can get at Costco, the Goya um, red kidney beans, not the dark kidney beans. So, so I just, since I have those on hand already, that's what I'm gonna use. But if I was just going and getting this um, from the grocery store, I would have gotten the dark kidney beans. All right. So, this is Sissy's turn. All right. Done? Yep. With that part. And now, I'm going to have to take part of my camera holder. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. Cute. And I got some chicken broth. You can get vegetable broth if you want. Um, I like to get bone broth. Bone broth actually has a little bit more protein because it has some of that collagen in it especially um in the winter time a lot of people have issues with joints um it'll help with healthy skin and hair and nails and all sorts of stuff so i like adding bone broth because um regular chicken broth isn't cooked as long and so therefore it doesn't have as much as the vitamins and minerals that you can find in bone marrow so that's why i get that Alright, and this is little man's turn. Your turn. Okay. Alright, go ahead and add that like this. That's kind of like 
juice. Kind of. I'm gonna give this a stir to see if we need any more liquid, which we probably will. Oh Is you a ton? Uh, yeah, we'll put a little bit more, maybe about two more cups of water in. Okay. I'm just gonna leave that in here. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna add just two more cups of water. And can you give it a stir? Yep. Actually, it's Little Man's turn. You want to give it a stir, Little Man? <laughs> Good job, bud. Alright, can now you can take the spoon out, but make sure you get all the stuff off the spoon. Give it a little tap tap. Oh gosh, that's lovely. You got chicken juice right in my eyeball. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Well, then you're going to cover and put on low or high, whichever you want. But I'm going to put it on low. And each crock pot is going to be different. Um, so my crock pot, I know my crock pot, it's not going to take a full eight hours to cook. Um, even though it is on low, it's going to take probably more about four hours. So it, so every crock pot is different. Once you know your crock pot, how the cook time works, you'll be able, all right, you'll be able to fix it, to set it go and let it go however long you need it to. Um, so for me, it's going to pretty much be until the chicken is cooked, and then we are going to add. Mommy. Oh hi, buddy. <laughs> Alright, and then we're going to add our other vegetables to it. So you might be wondering, like, why aren't you putting vegetables? Sorry, I'm, I'm closing one eye. I'm closing one eye because I don't want that chicken juice to get in my eye, and I really need to go get it cleaned out. But, um, you... Alright, all right, but let me get through this so I can go wash my eye. So, you... Don't want to put any green vegetables in at the very beginning because they are going to get the crap cooked out of them. Um, it's going to be, especially if you're going to end up using canned vegetables, I would try to see if you can find frozen or, which I just realized my Walmart order didn't give me my green beans. Darn it. <laughs> All right. I think I might have something I can use instead. Um, but you don't want to put any especially if they're canned if they're canned i've tried i tried to get fresh or frozen um but any green vegetables you don't want it to cook too long because it's just going to lose all its flavor they're going to taste super nasty and you want them to be fresh and green and vibrant so you can enjoy your food and not have a sucky crappy food there's a reason why so many people hate vegetables And I think it's because people overcook them. So we want to make sure our veggies are fresh tasting and flavorful. All right, so now I need to go clean my eye out and check on them and figure out what, what happened. And then I will see you back in the kitchen in like two seconds for you, but a few hours for me. And we will get back and we're gonna make some rolls. All right, see you in a minute, bye. Hi, we interrupt this program to tell you that I almost forgot a very important step. You are gonna take a thing of Parmesan cheese and you are going to cut, see the darker yellow right here? You're gonna cut that off. And then, crock pot here, you are going to take this and stick it in. Ooh, 
I'm glad I remembered that before I got too late. Started thinking about all the groceries that I got, and then I realized, oh wait, I forgot to put my cheese in. All right, all right so on with the program. All right, so now I am going to pro start the process for making dinner rolls. They are working on their stuff. I'm gonna get this started because we need to get this started. So it takes one hour to rise the first time, and then it takes you have to like punch it down, wait 10 minutes. I gotta get way back to be in the shop. So punch it down, wait 10 minutes, and then you roll it out and then put them in the little rolls and then it'll take another hour for them to rise. And so we need to get them going now if we wanna have them for dinner tonight. So first we start off with two cups of flour. And one thing to keep in mind, even with baking, I know a lot of people are gonna disagree. No, I'm gonna back up a little more. So even with baking, you don't worry about if you get something a little bit off or wrong. Um, it does not have to be precise. It does not have to be perfect. Nobody started out making a perfect recipe. Um, and it's trial and error. And especially like, so some days it's really humid here. And other days it's really dry here. So that's going to affect how I cook every day, especially with baking. And so just know that the recipe is more of a guideline. You do not have to worry about following it to a T, even with baking. And who knows, you can use it as a guideline and tweak things a little bit to your style. Once you get really good at following the recipe, you can like, you can tweak things, make it your style, and then come up with a new recipe. I can't tell you how many times I've messed up, even on these dinner rolls, where I bring them to like a potluck or something, I'd be like, all right, I'm not sure about these guys, I messed up, and they taste fine. They taste delicious, they taste fine. If I had never said anything, nobody would have known that I messed up. And so, just take it as an experiment. That's basically what this is. You don't have to worry about following everything perfectly. It's still, mo more than likely, if you're using the recipe as a guideline, it's going to turn out um, for the most part. Just take the stress away from it and put the love into it because when when you are being more stressed about it, you are going to mess up more and then it may not turn out because you might be like, but Brianna, I've tried that and I still messed up and the recipe sucked. Um, just eliminate the stress and put the love into it. And so you just take two cups Two. All right, so we got two cups in our mixer. mixer. I have my KitchenAid mixer here. There is no way I would do this one by hand. And then we're gonna need yeast. You need one package of yeast, or it would be two and one fourth teaspoon. And so since I have this jar, we keep it in the freezer so it lasts a little bit longer. Um, so we're gonna do two. and one fourth. And then I'm gonna give that just a slight little mix with this. And I use this attachment. Um, you could probably use the dough one, but I don't like that one. I don't feel like it gets it good even when I am working with dough. So, oops, just a slight mix and so it'll just get the flour oops, the flour and the yeast combined just a smidge and then we're gonna move over to the stove and so let's do that right now um, we are here with a nice saucepan and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one third a cup of butter one cup of milk one third a cup of sugar, 
and then a nice big pinch of salt. And then we're going to turn that on like a low, um, almost medium heat, but on the lower side. And then I'm going to go get something to stir with. Right, and you're going to cook this until it is the butter is mostly melted and everything is well combined and it'll like so you're going to stick your pinky finger in it and if it gives it just like a slight sting because it's like hot enough to give it a slight sting um then it's perfect if it burns your finger <laughs> then it's too hot and you need to let it cool down before you add it to your flour um, and then if it doesn't give, if it just feels warm, then it needs to like go a little bit longer. So you just go until it gives you that slight sting, but not a burn, if that makes sense. All right. So now let me show you what it looks like. You can see that some of that butter is still floating. And when I stick my finger in, it gives it a slight sting and that means it's time to turn it off and we are going to move i really need to take this thing off we're going to move it over here and pour it in all right and then i'm going to give that a quick sorry new to this whole camera thing a little spin like that and then we're going to add two eggs. all right so now i'm going to add two eggs try not to get shells in you can do this on the side um and then and then add them to make sure um and when my daughter is cooking that's what we do for her but I've been doing this for a while. I don't get shells in. <laughs> I'm gonna give my hands a quick rinse. And then we are gonna turn on the mixer for 30 seconds on low and then move it up to on high for three minutes. Now do this for three minutes and then once that's done, we'll come back for more. Alright, now that that has been going for three minutes, we are going to go ahead and take a cup. Um, we're going to add two and what, however much it takes to get to the consistency. I think it's two and three fourths. Of a cup but this is where it depends on like your climate so it might not be as much if you live in a super humid or in a super dry area and maybe more if you live in a humid area so you just want to be like a texture <laughs> so I will show you what it's supposed to look like when I get to it and so I'm just gonna add all of this slowly until we get it to the right thing All right, so let me show you here. It is getting close to that kind of a texture. So I am going to go ahead and take, so that was just after two cups. So I'm gonna take that and then I'm gonna add some more just with my hands, I'm not measuring. I'm gonna sprinkle it over to help not get my hands sticky. And you're gonna make a mess, but deal with it. Right, there we go. And then I will try to do this so you can see. I'll add a little bit more flour, just probably like that much in there. 
to get over the kind of sticky pieces. And then I'm just going to knead in the rest of it till it gets to the texture that I want it to be at. This is where weightlifting comes in handy. Alright, so then you want it to end up being around this consistency. You are going to take some olive oil and drizzle it all around. Drizzle it all around the bottom of the bowl. And then you're going to rub it Ooh. all together. So it looks like that. You're going to place it in your bowl. And then you're going to cover it with a towel and then you're going to let it rise for an hour. Alright, so it's been an hour now. So the dough has risen. And now we are going to punch it down and then wait 10 more minutes before we roll it out. Little man. Come here, bud. Come here real quick. Run, 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 run. Come up here. Okay. All right, let's roll this up. Can you punch it? Use your super gecko strength. Harder. Like that. So you punch it down like that. All right, good job, bud. Yep, all right, good job. All done. All right. And then we're going to cover it back up. Wait 10 minutes. And then get it ready to roll out. And so, well, I'm going to get the counter cleaned off a little bit so we can roll it out. All right. And now that we have let that sit for 10 minutes, I am going to divide it in half. That way it's just a little bit easier to roll out. <laughs> so, and divide it in half. And then you want to hold this real quick? Yeah. Hmm, all right. And then I'm going to sprinkle our counter with flour yeah. and give it a good, and then I'm going to put a little bit all over. Good job, buddy. Like that. And then she is going to roll it out. All right, now that we have about an hour-ish to go, I'm going to have her go ahead and chop up the zucchini and to cut the ends off. Now cut it in half. No, other way. There you go. Now cut it in half lengthwise. All right, now flip it over like I told you. There you go. There, that way it doesn't wiggle. Nope, again. Okay. Hello, buddy. Okay. All right. And now you can slice it like that. And then you're going to do the same for the rest of this. A little bit skinnier than that. You don't, you got to have a, hold up, hold up. And don't slide it like that. Hold on. Hold on. Alright, 
And so you don't want to do it like this. Put your hand back up. Okay. You're going to hold this part. And then just push. Okay. Make sure you're getting skinny. Push. 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 Alright, like that. And like, push like with that. There you go. I got this. I got the passport. Not like that. There you go. Let's get these out of the way. And then you'll do it like that for that one. All right, and so she's gonna finish cutting these up. I'm gonna see what the little man wants, and then we'll add these to our soup. Now <laughs> that we got um, these all, the zucchini all cut up, we are gonna add them to our crock pot. And if you have green beans, which I wish we did have, but Walmart forgot to put them in our order, so we don't have them. <laughs> And so instead, I'm going to use peas. And so peas are going to take way less time to cook. So I'm going to add those in when I add the spinach in. So if you have green beans, like you should have, <laughs> um, go ahead and add those as well at this point in time. So she's going to add the zucchini. Don't drop it like that. It's going to splatter. Gently. Not one by one, like that. Then we'll just because <laughs> it's gonna splash. Alright. Here. I'm gonna do it this way so it goes a little bit quicker. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna add it. You can do it and get those guys. Alright, now I'm also gonna go ahead at this point in time and take my chicken out. Can you excuse me so I can get a fork? All right, so fish for my chicken. You're all right, little dude. I know you do. Bye. All right, so I'm going to cut this real quick, and then we'll add that in, back in, and then we'll let it continue cooking throughout. And in about 30 minutes or so, I'm going to add some pasta to it. All right. <laughs> So now I'm going to add you guys have the pasta to you wanna add it bud? Huh? Do you wanna add it? Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna do the full box, but I got some pasta shells and might do like I don't want to. a third. No. Probably do like half of it. Alright. Here, you can help me pour this. We're not gonna do the whole box though, okay? Okay. Yeah, you can use any kind of noodles that you would like. Nope, we're gonna save the rest for later. Huh? Maybe we can have it for lunch another day. So lunch? Yeah, we can make some pasta with it. Okay. It's for dinner too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get it stir. And I already added that chicken back into it after I cut it up. And so now we're going to let those noodles cook. And then once those noodles are cooked, we're going to add some peas and spinach. Alright, so now I'm going to have chopped up some spinach here. And then I have some frozen peas. So now I'm going to add all of that in. Spinach in. Bring this over. Okay. 
probably added like a cup and a half of peas. So I'm gonna give that a stir and see how it looks. In the spinach, it's gonna look like it's too much, but it's gonna shrink down so much. I just gotta work it in there first. Oh my gosh, I'm too tall for this. So look how pretty it's already looking. So I'm going to let that cook down and reheat a little bit and then it'll be ready to go. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead over here. And here we have our rolls all risen. Uh, some of them are different sizes just because my daughter cut them a little funny. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put them in the oven. And again, that was 375 and I never put a timer on. We just cook it till the house smells amazing in there, golden brown. Also, don't mind my dirty oven. <laughs> Oops. And then come over here. And look how good it looks. So beautiful and so tasty. Um, this is also probably when you want to check for seasonings. If you need to add any extra garlic or Italian seasoning, salt, pepper. And you can remove the Parmesan cheese rind if you would like. Alright, so now we have our handy dandy serving spoon. It's a frog. And, and then... Whoops, don't want to spill. All right, now we have the gorgeous soup. The lovely dinner rolls. Now I'm gonna dish up everybody else's bowl and eat dinner. All right, we will see you in the next one. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification if you wanna be notified anytime we upload a new video. And if you like this video, go ahead and comment down below as well or comment anything else you would like to see from me, any other recipes you would like us to try. And that's what we'll do. <laughs> All right, see you in the next one. Bye.